Mrs. TC's out there. She's uh, cleaning the chicken coop without me. If I stand over here and talk to you guys long enough, I won't have to clean the chicken coop. Maybe I'll do that. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony and this is TC's Outdoors. So uh, today is the day. We are excited. We are going to light the boiler. Uh, and we talked uh, a day ago for me, but probably a week ago for you guys. Um, it, it's uh, October 29th and we had our second really heavy frost last night. It was like mid, like low 30s, 31, 32, and the house was 65 this morning. So, and we uh, we have still fighting off turning the mini split on. We're kind of frugal here at the TC Outdoors compound, um, and running the uh, outdoor boiler is definitely the more cost-effective option for us. So, um, I'm gonna get the fire lit, and we're gonna see. I may have to adjust the door seal, uh, as you know, once I got some smoke, it's hard to tell. But uh, the first thing I got to do here, so I've got the circulator pump already going. I'm going to unplug that and turn the unit on. And I've just got some of these little goofy, like kindling pieces from splitting. Um, I've, I will start a little tiny fire in there. And once I've got that going decent, then I will throw in some, uh, I've got a couple pieces of pine lumber, just something, you know, really dry stuff that I know is going to burn well. And then I'll throw in, once I've got a decent fire, I'll throw in some of these little chunks so I can get a good coal bed going. And uh, so let me take you over here and we'll turn everything on. I can show you how that all goes. So if you're not familiar with the uh, outdoor or central boiler, Classic Edge 350. So this is the uh, control panel. Just pretty simply hit the power button and you hold the power button. There we go. Pretty simple if you know how to use it. So it's going to run through the model and it runs through whatever you guys hear that that's the dampers closing they're just checking doing a little servo check down there everything's working like it says the door is open which it is so that's good news that's the water temperature 61 degrees and we'll wait till it flashes and it won't tell you the firebox until oh the firebox is 60 so i guess that kind of makes sense because there's it should be kind of equal so the top half of this is a 150 gallon tank uh, on the top portion and then down through the heat exchanger so we will open up the little access panel here maybe my camera woman can hold this for me and help me out there we go so just uh, two little thumb screws open that up and then this is the uh, what the inside looks like so this is my circulator pump it's running right now I can feel it running um, it's a little bit of warm so this is the uh, hot water out to the house and this is the return water um, right down there that's uh, the thermal pex that goes down through the ground. I'll show you guys that a little more in a second once we go in the house. But uh, so right now I'm just going to unplug the circulator pump from there. And we'll leave this open. And we will come over here. And we're going to get a fire started. So this is what I use. Just a, like a garden weed burner that I got off of Amazon. Uh, I used to have an igniter. But I stuck it in the fire for a little too long so that doesn't work anymore so I just got one of these little torch lighters no big deal but this shouldn't take too long the wood's pretty dry push this ignition air button and it starts the blower up it starts bringing air into the firebox my fire going there I'm gonna close this see how it goes we'll uh, come back once we've got the fire started and I add a little uh, little bigger stuff in there get some coal bed started and then we will once we got a decent fire going I'll take you guys in the house and show you around the uh, radiant system. So. All right, guys, the fire's been going for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. We'll take a peek inside, see what it looks like. Um, it's burning pretty good. I'm going to close the door and let it go for a little bit more before I add any more wood. Um, but I thought I'd take a second, so I don't know if you guys are in the market, or uh, but if you want to kind of know how a central boiler classic 350 works. So this is the smallest one of the gasification units. 
and the one drawback I think totally and on this one is there's no bypass door so the 550 the next step up has a bypass door so that when you open the this door you don't get killed with smoke uh, I'm not sure why they didn't do it on the 350 but I sure wish they did because I didn't think about it until after I'd ever run one this is my first boiler and if I had to do it over again uh, it was like I think a $2,000 difference for the larger one um, and it had a bigger higher or a bigger or a higher it had a higher btu output that was a tough one guys so it had a higher btu output obviously it'd be in larger unit so i could have eventually if i put an outbuilding out or a hot tub or a pool or whatever i could use that also uh this one i can run two pumps out here and i think there's still a little bit of room if i did put another little shop up someplace i could run a heat exchanger to it and uh, be able to heat that also with the boiler but so this is the the control panel i don't know if you guys can see that or not it's pretty bright out here today but you see the led says the fans on and the primary secondary well the the primary is the um, it's the air charge for the main firebox the secondary is what's the gasification part so you see the water temperature that's the firebox at 348 and then the water's coming up to 68 so we're already up eight degrees since when we started the fire and the fire is it's ripping in there the gasification process doesn't start until the secondary i think comes on at 500 once the temperature hits high 500 and then that does the it'll do the uh the led will be white for a little bit and i think when it gets to 700 then it turns red and then we'll get some cranking temperatures in there and hopefully we'll get get a look at that i've had temperatures as high as 1500 degrees in the reaction chamber um it really gets rolling when there's a good amount of good dry wood in there so all right so uh We'll come back here in a second. I'm going to refill it, and then we'll we'll meet up back in the utility room, and we'll talk about the uh, radiant system. Here we are. We're in the house, in the utility room. Welcome to my home. So here's my water filter system. Um, I'm going to have to kind of get behind the camera. It's kind of a tight little area in here. So because we're slab on grade, we had to have some place for all this stuff. We don't have a basement. So this is the thermal pecs that you guys saw outside at the boiler. That's coming out of the ground. That originally was going to be inside of a wall, but then I decided to leave that open. That's underneath the stairs that are in the back side of the garage. Goes up to the attic trusses, so I've got a little storage for our canning stuff back there. We uh, turned into doomsday preppers when the economy started tanking. We got a little uh, flour and sugar on the shelf, some rice, just to make sure we can eat, you know. Try to take care of our family for a little while. So, this is the the packs as it comes in. Thermal packs are, oh, there we go. Thermal packs comes in. And this insulation is the hot water loop coming in. So the first stop up there, that first pump is my little heat exchanger back there for the domestic hot water. So the water comes in, hits that pump, pumps through the hot water, or hoops through the one side of the heat exchanger back out, comes in through here, and then it goes into the floor. So um, a little temperature drop in the water going into the floor you wouldn't really notice if they were both running at the same time but vice versa if the water went into the floor first and then into the the hot water you'd never get hot water because it comes out of the floor at about 70 degrees so uh the water i've got the uh so it comes let's see i know this is going to be kind of all over the place guys i'm sorry so this top line is the water in comes over to the top that's a thermostatic mixing valve right there uh, i have that set to 130 so the water coming in from the boiler is usually the set point's 185 so it's anywhere from 185 to one eh, 170 it'll dip down to if it's cycling on and off um so you don't want 170 degree water going into your concrete floor so 130 is about the max from the research that i found that people were using so i hung on the top side so it goes in this is a circulator pump for my uh, floor so then it comes down into the manifold now i have nine loops uh in the floor and these are just little actuator solenoid valves that come out of here this is there's two zones there's a thermostat in the garage and then there's a thermostat in the house and those are the only two zones there's, i guess three zones technically if you count the domestic hot water loop so um, i'll explain that here in a second but so the water goes into the floor at 130 i've got temperature gauges right there it comes out right now nothing's on so we're that's just the floor temperature is just short of 70 degrees and then it comes out 130 in and it's usually right around 70 75 coming out when it's going back out to the boiler so it comes out of there and 
the way the thermostatic mixing valve works, if you're not familiar, um, this is the return line off the manifold that comes up and it will mix the cold return water with the inbound hot water and this mixing valve and then it only lets it through once it's at the temperature that you set. So that's how that goes and then whatever is not getting mixed goes back to the boiler to be reheated and then the process continues. So this pump, the pump at the boiler that you guys saw me unplug, that pumps on all the time. That water is always circulating and then whenever the thermostats call, there's my zone controller up there. Um, <clears throat> so whenever the zone controller turns priority, whatever, whatever zone is calling for heat, um, it'll activate the pump and it's that's that's the way it goes so um, I installed all of this my wife and I and my son did the tubing under the concrete um, I got some pictures I'll throw them in right now um, and I'll just kind of talk over top of them so I got all of this stuff from uh, PEX heat I found them online um, you send them your blueprint you send them your R value and they have a program and a bunch of engineers and they figure out what you need and you kind of design the system back and forth uh, originally they had my hot water tank as just a storage tank it wasn't really a hot water tank which means I would have to use the boiler all year round and that's not what I wanted to do so this is electric um, in the winter time last year I left it on I just turned it way down and I wasn't sure it was my first year using the boiler water to heat the domestic hot water but I'm pretty comfortable pretty confident in it right now so I think what I'll do is I'll turn the electric off and that way the recovery rate sometimes it would kick on just for a second and I don't know I just I don't know if that's good for it, just to cycle on for two seconds and then turn right back off so I just think I'll turn the power right off so uh, there's a thermostat this thermostat right here is goes to a temperature probe that I've got tucked in behind the insulation at the bottom side of the tank and so you see these loops here that's this is the domestic side of the heat exchanger so it pumps the water through the heat exchanger and it either goes in the tank or it goes out to whatever plumbing fixture is calling for water so there if the tank temperature drops these pumps I know a lot of guys don't have pumps in their uh, system and I I think this is probably overkill for sure after doing more research I know that they make like the sidearm heat exchangers that use just like the thermal uh, convection to move the water around but for us this is the system they designed and I really didn't know any better at that time um, so this is what we've got and I mean it's efficient it works and these little pumps don't hardly take any electricity our electric bill actually drops by about forty dollars a month um, give or take probably not 40 right now when the air compared from air conditioning to heating season it's 40 dollars from when you know that little gap where you don't run anything it's probably a 25 dollars reduction just turning this hot water tank off um so that's what these pumps that circulates the water if if this tank was to drop temperature and nobody's calling for it it'll pull out of the tank and then it'll just circulate it until it's the you know the temperature requirements met and it'll kick it back off um if you're looking to do something like this, I really recommend Pex Heat. They were awesome to deal with. Um, this is for sure not sponsored because I didn't even have a YouTube channel back then. But I was in contact with them, I don't know, four or five different times about the layout and about the design. And then it was like, um, I'll talk about numbers in a minute just so I can be more accurate. But I think it was like 8500 bucks for all the tubing, all of the mechanical parts, all the fittings, all the pumps, all the everything, the manifold, everything you need to take it. You take it out of the box, boxes, lots of boxes, and you start the install. And there was a wiring diagram, there's a plumbing diagram, and with your 8,000 or so dollars, you're also, you've got a consultation. Uh, you can call them anytime you want, shoot them an email. Uh, we were doing the layout for the floor, and there was nine loops total. And they sent me a manifold with only eight spots so i had to call them right away obviously i ended up hooking two of the loops together so that we could pressure test everything but in the meantime they rushed me out a nine spot manifold so i could get everything mocked up i think i've got some pictures of that too so the hardest part i think of the whole process was trying to figure out where this wall was going to end up because there was nothing here it's just a blank slate so i'm trying to measure and it, that everything once the concrete's poured everything goes wherever it can at that point so um i had this uh manifold mocked up on like 
these rebar stanchion that I made and uh, it worked. They they were able to work around it. The rebar's still in there, but that's why I just cut it off flush and took everything off. But it was kind of a, eh, that was probably the hardest part, I think, of the whole process. Labor intensive part was definitely the tubing in the floor. Um, that was, it's a lot of crawling around. We used double bubble foil for insulation, if any of you guys are wondering. Um, Pex Heat guys recommended the double bubble foil over the uh, two inch foam and they're the experts you know I, i'm i'm not an expert at insulation or really anything to be speaking you know um i have general skills um i did all the plumbing for this um i can do a moderate amount of electricity and you know so i did all the wiring and this is all low voltage stuff anyhow for the thermostats and things like that but i put all that stuff in place it was a very much diy they also ask you that on the pex heat what your skill set is and how 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 uh, DIY friendly is the kit? Because the more the more DIY friendly it is, the more cost effective it is. Obviously, but um, you know you got to know what your what your limitations are because this is a it's a pretty significant investment, and I don't think that you'd want to be trying to figure it out on your own. I was pretty comfortable that I could pull it off, um, and it's it's worked out really well for me. You know, it's the the radiant heat. There's nothing like it. That was kind of the when we started building the house. I knew this is what I wanted. I wanted slab on grade. And then I really didn't even think about heating the domestic hot water until afterwards. That was just kind of an afterthought. But I'm glad we did that because it's it helps on the boiler, keeps the boiler running a little more frequently, keeps the creosote down, keeps the demand on it, and it helps us in the pocketbook. So it works out good. Um, so that is the gist of it. Um, the thermostats that I have are pretty complicated also. They're a, the ones touch screen and um, every year I have to get the book out <laughs> to turn the thing on because I can't remember how to do it. But that's just me probably. I'm sure that some of you guys have a longer memory than me maybe. I don't know. And then that, all that stuff back there, that's just my, uh, that's my domestic water coming in. It's a descaler basically. We've got really hard water. It's city water, but there's a lot of chlorine in it. And then we had, we weren't even here three months and all the fixtures started plugging up everywhere. So I had to do something and I didn't really have the room in here for um, a traditional water softener. And I don't really like the way water softeners make your skin feel that slimy kind of salty. I just never was a fan of that. So I did some research and I came up with this. Um, this is made by AO, AOA Smith. You can get the same stuff at Lowe's, or you can get it labeled differently, and it could cost you a lot more money. But the the manufacturer for these, I've seen them blue, I've seen them, I've gray ones out there. There's different aqua something or other. They'll sell you a whole system, but it's this stuff. It's just a different color. Um, same thing. I got it all off of Amazon. I can throw links if if anybody's interested. Just shoot me an email, and it'd be easier than trying to put five thousand links in the description. But either way, uh, the water comes in, goes through a pre filter up into this so the first filter is a descaler it's got some kind of media in there that changes the the polarity of the water i think is the way it works so that all of the sediment that's in there just won't stick it's still in there it doesn't filter any of it out so all the hard water minerals and things like that and then it goes into a charcoal filter and then to a post filter and then it goes out and since we put it in all the faucets are so much better my skin's not I was getting really dry last year with the, the chlorine level was huge. So that was the carbon tank pulls a lot of chlorine out of the water. Um, so yeah, that's been a pretty solid investment too. I'm pretty happy with that. So this, this is the utility room though, guys. So welcome, welcome to my home. I don't know where. All right guys, we're back out at the boiler and we are making hot water. That's the fire temperature, 736 and 149 for water temperature. So that's pretty good. The the combustion chamber I don't expect really hot or reaction chamber I don't expect really crazy temperatures down there just yet this works better the boiler once it gets some ash built up inside and uh, a decent coal bed then it'll really start to function like it's supposed to so uh, 750 down below I know the woods dry there's nothing coming out of the chimney up there just a little kind of heat you can't really see there's no smoke though it's burning it off um, we can open that too if you want we'll take a look yeah, there's really, you can see it. So there's the gasification chamber. See a little bit of flame shooting down, but nothing major. So, like I said, we'll get more footage of that later on in the year once it's actually kind of running at the temperatures that you're looking for. But, let's see what the fire looks like. 
burning for probably just about an hour now um, we took a break for lunch me and mrs. TC's outdoors and now we're back out here at the boiler we're also gonna do uh, some cleaning of the chicken coop today not everybody's favorite task but it's got to get done it's a beautiful day for it so so I think I talked numbers real quick so I've had some questions about pricing um, so these prices probably actually not probably definitely will not apply to anything you're gonna buy right now um, I paid it was ninety six hundred dollars for the boiler and the thermal packs and the thermal packs was twelve hundred uh, it was 80 foot of thermal packs that I needed that stuff's pretty pricey um, and so the boiler what's that eighty four hundred bucks was the boiler and I called to get parts last year when I called to get that stepper motor and the guy at the uh, at the dealer told me he said he said that uh, it had gone up to eleven thousand dollars for the same boiler so that's unbelievable to me <laughs> but i guess i mean i guess that's just the way it goes i think i asked how much a 550 was when i was over there not too long ago and they were like sixteen seventeen thousand dollars something like that for the for the next size up of this um so my prices aren't going to be really accurate if you're going to go out and buy one right now but this is just kind of what I paid. So I got what I have, 9,200 or 9,600 bucks in the boiler and the uh, the tubing going into the house, the thermal packs, and then I had $8,800 for um, all of the mechanicals. So all the tubing, all the pumps, all the fittings, everything it took to get it up and running, all the thermostats, the uh, zone controllers, and everything that you guys saw in the utility room, all of that stuff was 8,800 bucks. So. The grand total is uh, what's that? 18,000, 185. So uh, I don't know. And this was like a ground-up build, so I don't know what it would cost you to put uh, like a forced air system in. I, I we didn't get any estimates for that. I did get an estimate for geothermal, and that was seventy-five thousand dollars, and we definitely weren't on board for that. The return on investment there was uh, probably the rest of my life. So this thing behind me, without having to pay for any firewood it's basically paid for itself I mean um, I think it was four years to pay off the boiler and then everything inside if we decided at some point when I get old and feeble and I can't cut firewood anymore um, I'll just I can unplug the boiler sell it and put an on-demand hot water tank in there and it would heat the floor just fine so I mean there's options there you could get propane or electric or whatever whatever you know is the cheapest at that time but hopefully is a long time from now because I really enjoy the cutting and stacking and splitting and the burning and the talking to you guys about it so either way the boiler in my opinion I've said it before but I think it's a home run outdoor with well, the mess is outside so there's no bugs in and out of the house there's no the mess you know with the bark falling off and the dirt and the dust so <clears throat> all in all once the boiler gets up to once the water gets to 185 I'm gonna plug that circulator pump back in and then I'm gonna go in the house and get everything turned on and tested and everything like that let's see am I forgetting anything I don't know if I'm forgetting something if you guys have any like kind of descriptive questions or something that I might I just breezed over uh, let me know in the comments or just shoot me an email my email is in the uh, um, description I know what it's like to try to figure this all out on your own and there's questions that come up so uh, don't be afraid I don't know everything but I can at least explain what I've been through for sure so all right guys well that's going to do it for today's video uh, if you're into this kind of stuff or you know into firewood production or anything else I got going on or just plain enjoy my company um, please hit the like and subscribe, share with your friends. And until next time, get outdoors and do something you love.